Hello, welcome to any combo lords joining me here to today slash tonight. It's a tonight for me right now, a rather warm one, which we'll get to later. It's been a hot week, which will play into some topics today. Today or tonight, depending where you're at, I need to tell you folks some very important things. You see, I've realized some very important things that may take you a second to trust me on. Some conspiracy theories, you see, that so, as some call them, you may think are false because we haven't taken enough of them into account at the same time. You see, with the globe I have here, you may have heard some people theorize over history that the Earth is hollow that it is a sphere but secretly hollow, the hollow earth conspiracy. You also may have heard of people throughout history, an even more common one, thinking the earth is flat and not hollow. Perhaps it's different. Like I have discovered with a giant epic mathematical equation that involves e and pi and i and the square root of two and the golden ratio in this equation, I've proven that the earth is both flat and hollow. That's the trick. It's a shape that's impossible for humans to visualize or draw or make a picture of because it's flat but hollow. We've cracked it, ladies and gentlemen, and anyone else that we got it. Okay, uh, that is a joke intro. Some people actually, I don't know if anyone on the planet actually believes both. That would be pretty funny if somebody believes. That just occurred to me when I was thinking about these, like, what if it was flat and hollow and it relates to some four-dimensional shape? So, hmm, in any case, we know the Earth's not flat or hollow. We can call beliefs of the other sort uh, pseudoscience or meaning something that, you know, is believed by some but does not line up with what is mathematically provable to 99.9%. Uh, you know, not the point infinite nines we discussed in the latest combo class episode, which is linked in the description if you haven't seen that. After you watch the stream, make sure you've seen point infinite nines. But even if you think you have an opinion on it already, you're going to do a lot of different stuff in there. Uh, this is just point an amount of nines to say that we know something is true. Like, scientists aren't going to say that even gravity is 100% proven because it's good to stay humble and knowledgeable about the ways that your science may change over time. But we would say that gravity is like 99.99999 with a bunch of nines percent. And the amount of nines in a more formulated way is the way that some scientists measure sureness of how much we know something. Like gravity would have more nines on its sureness than, for example, certain other things we may that there are eight main planets in the solar system that may not have as much sureness, you know. We will even look at some actual space news today, but we're mostly going to be looking at some conspiracy theories, somewhat as a joke, somewhat as a scientific and moral lesson, because I was seeing this genuine new modern conspiracy theory that some people were falling into. I doubt any of my viewers fell into this, but it's both funny and a lesson about something going on in the world of a conspiracy theory that sounds ridiculous, but that some people actually have been falling into like a week ago or in the past week or so. And so, although none of my viewers are probably in that camp, we're gonna build up to that. We're gonna look at some old, simpler conspiracy theories from back in the day, some that I have in book form, such as The Grape Cure, and some that we have in a digital book form, like re-looking at, uh, where is my PDF of this? There is a, there's a book that, this is a good lesson, first of all, that if you, if you quote a source, a source being in an official form is not enough. You can't just say, I read it and it's, from a laboratory, and that means it's official or whatever. Similarly, you can't say, well, I read it in a book, and books can't be wrong if I read it in a book. It's correct. Because otherwise, we could say that 
uh, definitely at least the flat earth part of this is correct because there has been a book written that contains 100 proofs the earth is not a globe. And by not a globe, it does not mean an oblate spheroid. It is not about the slightly egg-like shape of the planet. It means flat. Now, <laughs> let's um, come back to this as we get to that. And we have looked through a few of these before, but we're going to use it as another example because we haven't read through nearly all of these proofs of the type of strange rabbit holes that some people can get carried down. And remember that although all of this may seem like old school, like this is something you'd only believe in the 1800s or something, people weren't that different back in the day. I mean, people change a lot over time and society, you know, is very different, but people's ability to be gullible toward things has remained the same. There, There's maybe a slight less amount of, like, insane conspiracy theories deeply believed in terms of, like, insane so far that it's like the Earth is flat level, but, or what the grape cure is going to say, but there are certainly conspiracy theories that people still believe. Now, some people may worry that this will veer into political territory because some conspiracy theories people believe have a political basis, but we don't even need to get to anything that I would consider genuinely political to note what some modern conspiracies are. And it will rely on, you know, calling certain things pseudoscience, which a few people will be like, consider parts of the stream today to have a political edge, but I think you should rethink your thought if you get there, because really all we're going to be referring to is science. And as a science channel, we need to make sure that whether or not somebody accidentally categorizes something as, that's political, we shouldn't talk about it now, or whatever, that we don't let thoughts like this linger too much without getting mocked or without, you know, some of them are bad enough thoughts. We might have to even say like, you know, recommend that a book publisher would stop carrying the book or something. I don't believe in full on censorship where you like fully forbid a book unless it contains a nuclear bomb code or something. But you know, sometimes you can have even more hateful conspiracies. This one is, not a very hateful conspiracy. As far as conspiracies over history go, Flat Earth is one of the funner ones to sort of look at because there's less of a dark edge of people conspirating about, uh, like, putting each other down. Some conspiracies end up weirdly getting tied into, like, racial stereotypes or things like that, but Flat Earth is more like this such cartoonish level of people who believe the Earth's flat not only think that they know this really cool thing about science, but they think that almost everyone on the planet is an idiot. They think that almost everyone on the planet is unbelievably gullible and is believing this globe conspiracy. You know, I did come across the thought once of maybe... The, here's the one thing that got me to consider flat Earth. I'm joking. It's not there. It's not flat. But the one most believable possibility, if it were flat, why would it matter that you would want to trick people as a government to think the Earth's round? Why would that help a government to spend so much money on that secret? Well. Maybe it's not the government doing this. Maybe it's the globe companies. They can sell globes for a lot more money than flat paper maps. So the globe companies are behind all of it. Now, next, you'll see they're going to start uh, tricking you to believe that the Earth has a molten core so they can sell scientific models of it. No, I'm kidding. There is a molten part of the inner Earth. Um, Anyway, looking at just a few examples of one of the oldest school conspiracy theories, we're going to read a few random paragraphs of the flat earth proofs. And luckily, 
I realized I have a hundred sided die, so this is perfect. We'll roll the hundred sided die like three times and we're gonna read whatever proofs the hundred sided die gives us because there's 100 proofs that this guy came up with. Now you'll note that the lower the number, the more effort or you know, the more pride the guy probably had in the thought we're gonna read because the higher the number, the guy started running out of steam. He's like, oh man, I thought that a hundred proofs would be easy. It's a way catchier title. I told everyone it's gonna be a hundred, but I wrote down 50 and I have, I wrote down all the ones I know. I gotta come up with 50 more. So he's having trouble making the other 50 not be the same as one of the earlier ones. Cause it's like, really, how are you gonna do a hundred proofs? You know, once you've been like, uh, I don't trust mirrors, uh, shadows are weird, uh, this, that, you're gonna run out. So, let's see which proof we should read. We are going to begin with number three, it looks like is on top. And for proof number three, surveyors operations in the construction of railroads, tunnels, or canals, canals are conducted without the slightest allowance being made for curvature. Although it is taught that this so-called allowance is absolutely necessary. This is a cutting proof that Earth is not a globe. Now, this is mixing some things up because he's saying it's being taught that this allowance is necessary. Now, hold on. It is taught that there is curvature. It is, no, nobody's taught in school if a surveyor is making a canal, they have an allowance for a curve. It's like, you're just, it's a complete, it's like when the one plus uh, one times one equals two proof guy we looked at the other day, uh, who believed that one times one equals two, uh, when he says that everybody is taught that the square root of two is two and that's impossible. It's like, wait, hold on, uh, nobody was taught that. <laughs> but yeah, here, so it is not taught that this allowance related to surveyors' operations. Well, I don't know, maybe in the 1880s <laughs> when this book came out, maybe they talked more about surveyor operations in school. But still, the wrong part about this one on the big scale is that it's actually wrong. Maybe back in the day, there wasn't as big of a surveyor project or something, but if you have a really, really big spherical-ish object like the Earth and you make a canal, a canal is minuscule on the Earth and you're not gonna notice that much curvature in terms of digging. If I make, uh, imagine, like this is this sphere. These are continent sized. Like my hand is the size of a continent. Imagine how small a canal is. So you're not gonna notice that much curvature with that. And if you actually make a really big one, like if you track the Great Wall of China or something, although that does go up and down mountains, but if it was you track the average of the Great Wall of China, it does curve. <laughs> so we're gonna read two more of these old school flat earth proofs, and then I'll look at the chat for a moment, and then we're gonna go to the uh, middle aged conspiracies all right um next we have 94 the die rolled so 94 we're going to see 94 so oh it's a long one in cornell's geography i don't know what that is but we'll assume that this is a accurate book or i mean not fully accurate it was the 1880s but We'll assume that this was a more accurate text he's quoting because it sounds like he's trying to roast it. In Cornell's geography, there is an illustrated proof of the form of the earth, a curved line on it, which is represented, uh, which is represent, what? This isn't even right grammar, which is represented a ship in four positions as she sails away from an observer is an arc of 72 degrees or one fifth of the supposed circumver. Oh! circumference of the globe. Well, that, okay, yeah, that's why I knocked it over. It was to demonstrate the globe. It was on purpose. It's not because it's connected uh, to this phone and to the abacus and other stuff, and when one falls, they all fall. Now, 10 such ships as those which are given in the picture would reach the full length of the arc, making, okay, so I actually, 
let's go forward or backward. We'll, we're going to skip this one for now because I don't know about Cornell's geography. He's trying to like disprove a particular source right there. Let's look at the one before. Oh my God, the next, I was going to go forward now. It's in Cornell's intermediate geography. Okay, yeah, so if I don't know this one, I definitely don't know this one. All right, oh, he really, this guy really was mad at Cornell's geography. He also tries to go at someone named Mr. Hind. See, he devolves into roasts of specific people who believe in the globe. <laughs> no. Okay, before, we'll go to this one before. It's not about Cornell. Who, I don't even think this is a guy like the school Cornell is named after, or maybe, I don't know. We have seen that astronomers, to give us a level surface on which to live, have cut off one half of the globe in a certain picture in their books. Uh, see page six, to, maybe he has a picture somewhere. Now astronomers having done this, one half of the substance of their spherical theory is given up. What? Since then, the theory must stand or fall in its entirety. It has really fallen when the half is gone. Is he acting like when they cut the globe in half to sh show that what it looks like on the inside, that the astronomers believe it could actually float like that in space? They're just cutting it in half to show what's inside it. Since then, I don't even know what he means by this. Nothing remains then but a plain Earth. Is he, he's really saying that since they cut it in half, that it's like flat on the top and that's basically a plane, like a flat earth. And, and they don't cut it in half to say, we think the earth actually might be half a sphere. <laughs> okay, one last flat earth proof before we go forward an era. Now, Uh, it landed on 35. 35. If we examine a true picture of the distant horizon or the thing itself, we shall find that it coincides exactly with a perfectly straight and level line. Now, since there could be nothing of the kind on a globe, and we find it to be the case all over the earth, it is a proof that the Earth is not a globe. Now, this is actually just not true. This guy maybe didn't live at the marina. If you go to a beach that's big enough, if you go to a beach with a full-on horizon, you can see a curve. It's like, especially if you're up on a mountain or something, it's not that hard from certain places to see it. And... You don't see much. You don't see like a huge bend or something because the Earth's really big, but you can see a really slight bend. And especially if you're in a plane, you can see it. And then they're just going to say somewhere that no planes, well, I don't know if he had planes yet here, but no plane windows, the glass is curving it in a fake way. And then if somebody goes up in a plane without windows like that and films it, they'll say, no, the camera lens is distorting it wrong. And if they got taken up by NASA on a spaceship and saw that it was round, they would end up coming back to Earth and probably saying, no, NASA must have drugged me and given me some weird hallucinogenic thing that made me think that it was round. It's, they tricked me again. It's because they'll, they'll turn anything into evidence for what they want to see. So... We'll leave this open for now and see if we need to come back to it later. We're going to go to an actual paper book now that I have. But let me look at our comments first. Hello to everybody who is joining. Uh, welcome to everyone who is saying hi again who hasn't been in the chat for a while. Good to have all of you around at various times. Somebody said, remember the I show meat incident? I think you mean when I, I randomly do know a lot about like youtuber or streamer drama or stuff so i don't watch that guy but i think you mean the time when a streamer called i show speed like showed his dick on stream or something by accident or maybe i don't know if you mean i should be careful not to do that i don't think you need to worry i don't think there's much of a chance of that accidentally happening and I, I would imagine there's a decent chance that he did that just to get articles written about him. 
Now, which is kind of messed up if that's the case, because his audience is really young. So I don't know. But thank you all for joining. And love you all. Now what we're going to look at next is a slightly milder, in a way, conspiracy. This one could be even more hazardous to your life if you follow it, because it's a conspiracy related to a food or a sort of diet lifestyle. Now, this particular one is called The Grape Cure. And I'm going to have to look up this author to see what year it came out, because... It looks like she also did some other weird things, like um, she wrote some really controversial health subjects. It says she was a propagandist and, um, oh, Lord Kitchener, that's a wild name. And she wrote a prophecy. This is what I was looking for. So this we need to get to analyze in a later stream. After I show you the grape cure, you'll agree that these are probably going to be pretty hilarious, wild books. So, they call these the prophecies and religious parts, but this is, like, almost as religious-ish because it has these, like, hardcore beliefs it goes with, and some of them are more philosophical, which make them something that I could personally disagree with but would be hard to say prove wrong. Others are making bold scientific claims that it would be very dangerous to believe. So this book, The Grape Cure, I don't have any grapes as props. We can move the globe prop, but I do have some fruits that uh, I got a pumpkin, first of all, because we're getting close to Halloween. And I got some stuff I picked from my yard. I don't know if we'll be eating any of these later, but look at these apples I got from the yard. A miniature one from one tree. This is from another tree, a big old green one. And this is like a perfect looking apple. This is like the apple that killed Snow White, or like, I guess it didn't kill her, but you know. Um, so, ooh, it's the apple season, like I said. We're gonna do an applesauce tutorial sometime. So these will be our props for a moment, I guess, because we're gonna, oh, and there's also this, which is a pear. Usually the ones on this tree grow even bigger, but ooh, these are really good. Now, we're gonna look at the grape cure for a moment. And I we can't read the whole book, even though it's not that long, but we have to skim through a few parts and a few like quotes. Now, the point of this book is basically that if you commit to this absolutely insane grape-based diet for a period of time, that you will feel very ill for a while, which that part I believe, and then that that's actually all of your like demons and toxins leaving your body, and that after you feel really ill, you'll like magically feel way better and it'll have cured every issue and that it can they say at some point in here that it can cure cancer and things like that. Like that boldness level of claims, which is why I don't feel bad, even though it's, you know, maybe this person likes grapes a lot. Uh, I don't feel bad if we have to roast them and make some raisins out of this because this <laughs> would be quite bad if you actually tried this. Here they say, look, Regarding cancer, they say that uh, the body of the cancer patient contains the most virulent, virulent poison and that cancer is the death and disintegration of a given part of a living body. Under the grape diet, that decomposition is arrested, checked. But the dang, da, da, da. So they're saying that when you take the grape diet, that it will fix your cancer and that it will fix all sorts of other issues that of course you will want to go to a doctor for. Here there, it's very uh, anti-typical doctor medicine. So if you got convinced by this book, you'd end up not going to a doctor and doing this insane grape thing. So let me see what some of the most insane chapters in here were. So. 
Let's look at how much they recommend. It has been observed that many patients are eating too many grapes. It's like, well, yeah, you told them to eat only grapes. They're going to be hungry. Two pounds a day, or if the patient is active and out of doors, three pounds is usually enough. If the patient is not hungry, it's not necessary for this. Da, da, da. So, and that's, this is weird. It says, you don't need to force them to eat. Seven meals is not compulsory, nor is it necessary. The, who considers seven meals to be normal? This is another one of those, like, they're saying, like, the typical way it's done is like this, which is wrong. And but you look at it and you're like, that's not the typical way it's done. <laughs> you don't need to follow this seven meals a day plan. It's like, what seven meal a day plan? <laughs> so, um, that, so this person has studied a bunch of people who they've um, given these grapes and they've written all of these notes about what they have figured out about all the stuff it cures and stuff. Um, let's see what else it cures. Um, it says diabetes. This sounds like the worst advice. It sounds like this would straight up like very anti-helpful. If you have diabetes, you don't want to eat that much sugar. It's like a thing that if you have the wrong amounts of sugar, your blood goes really wild and you can pass out. So it says that this method, meaning the grape cure, has been particularly successful with diabetes. The grape sugar is believed to be an organic solvent which neutralizes the sugar deposits in the blood. When taking the exclusive grape diet for diabetes, pe people who have been taking insulin should cut down gradually on the intake of insulin until it becomes zero. You cannot mix it with the grape diet and get satisfactory results. This woman was straight up killing people in the, what the, in the 19, uh, un, early 1900s or late 1800s. If anyone followed this advice, they're like at high likelihood to die. If you have diabetes and you stop taking your insulin and eat an insane amount of sugary grapes. Now, I forget and I couldn't find off the top of my head how she feels about raisins. Or if they even had raisins in her day. I'm sure they did. Because it seems like I'm guessing either she would be really into raisins or really against them. I imagine she would have some strong opinion about raisins on one side or the other. Now, anyways, she keeps going on about all these diseases. Syphilis, tuberculosis, that supposedly the grape cure will work for. And all of them, she's saying like how much it works for it. But it ranges from like, yeah, the grape diet's pretty good for that to like, yeah, the grape diet's perfect for that. There's a time that she's like, don't do the grape diet for this. Um, now, what are some of the other absolutely insane ones here? So it says if the patient gets tired of grapes to start forcing them to have grape juice. So... <laughs> Oh, raisins. Okay, yeah, here it is. Let's see. Raisins have been taken for some of the periods to supply bulk with good results. She's into raisins, yeah. So, for example, here's an example of how you might go about one of your days. A glass of grape juice upon arising. Two hours later, a cupful, more or less, of raisins. And either grape juice or raisins at two-hour intervals for the remainder of the day. <laughs> oh my god so there's let me just flip through this a little more before we move to the next uh, level of modernness of our conspiracies because there are just some things in here that are absolutely insane there's oh here she's going on there's other beliefs of hers that get mixed in this is why it like veers onto she starts getting closer to like what her prophecy texts are probably like. There's a chapter about how there's all these societal problems caused by desire for sex and that if you eat enough grapes, then you'll not want sex as much and then the societal problems will go away. Um, <laughs> and she says it has nothing to do with faith. It has to do with nature, eating all the grapes. 
But then she says the grape cure is a divine gift. So you can't really say this has nothing to do with faith. And then like two paragraphs later, say it's a divine gift. Now, the things in here are just so weird and wrong. She goes on another whole paragraph about cancer and about how kids born with it must have had it passed to them by their mom because she didn't do a grapey enough thing. And the most magnetic food is the name of the first subtitle here. And it's cosmic magnetism. It's many pointed leaves forming many triangles absorb vital essences from the air. A perfect grape is circular in form and a bunch of grapes resembles a triangle. Students of mysticism and occultism know what these two symbols, the circle and triangle, represent. It's a funny way to phrase it. They, I feel like they represent a lot of different things. I don't think anyone into mysticism would be like, yeah, the triangle, that represents that one thing. The circle, that represents that one other thing. So, um, the grape diet. Um, Oh man, you do not want to eat at this woman's house. She says, all foods that require cooking should be steam cooked. So, oh man, that sounds really bland and like <laughs> textureless. You steam all the food you eat, even when you're not on the grape cure. Um, every kitchen stove is a laboratory on which the living essence, organic salts, is converted into dead matter, inorganic poisons. So she's really against cooking on a stove. Um, sometimes she'll say something about, this is something that happened to me, and then say, this proves that. <laughs> so leave some comments if you want on another stream me to do an entire audiobook of the grape cure unless like her great grandkid sues me or something um but in any case um we're gonna move on from the grape cure in a moment to some other ones uh because yeah it's just hilarious um some of the things she believes and some of them like start out nice and then just like take a left turn into insanity so yeah what are the chapters again in this um, is there a table of contents yeah um the secret of the success Definitions. Okay, one or two more little looks, and then we move on. Oh, this is good. The definitions. There's like a little glossary in the back. Okay, grape cure. A po oh, yeah, the book's really old. It's falling apart. But grape cure. It says, a popular method of treatment. Come on. You're the one who made this up. It's not that popular. Come on. And consisting of more or less exclusive diet of grapes. Grape, they define. Grape cure, they define. Wait, what? There's a second definition for grape cure? Oh, they're quoting something called the International Encyclopedia. A system of natural truth. See, <laughs> They left a definition on top that doesn't have a source that calls it a popular method. And then the one that actually has a source just calls it a system of treatment. So, hmm, about that popular part. Now, yeah, they got a weird little, like, it's not a glossary, actually. It's just a bunch of different places, ways to define grape cure. So... Um, which is a pretty bad type of glossary. It's like, imagine you had like a glossary for like calculus and you're like, okay, cool. I want to look up like derivatives and then some other stuff. And you're like, all right, I got the definition for derivative next. 
a different source's definition of derivative. Okay, maybe two is helpful. Okay, next, a third source's definition of derivative. You got any other words? But, okay. Now, last, let's look at um, this chapter. They're calling it a mono diet. Talking about the stomach as a laboratory. The grape is, as far as I know, the most powerful nature solvent of some chemical deposits and at the same time, the most drastic eliminator. <laughs> okay. So that's the grape cure. They're talking about how grapes can dissolve tumors. Grapes stop headaches. Um, oh, and then the funny part too is that they say that you're gonna feel really bad and you're gonna like feel awful and you're like, you're gonna be like throwing up and like going to the bathroom 10 times a day when you're on the grape cure, but that that's all of the bad things coming out of your body and it's good overall. The patient should remember that every new ache and pain under the grape diet is an expression of life of renewed activity. Nerves that have been atrophied for years have been stimulated by the grape or maybe stimulated by the mono diet, giving you not enough nutrients. The grape is the perfect food, a most complete food. Sometimes she like forgets what she's talking about and she's just like, oh, grapes. Okay, so um, that's the grape cure. And that I would classify as not only as the first main term you would call that is maybe like a pseudo scientific diet. But I would also consider it a conspiracy theory of sorts because it has the vibe in the book of you've been being tricked by the doctors all along. You didn't need the medicine. You needed the grapes. And so a lot of pseudoscience becomes conspiracy like because the people who believe it have it tied into this whole web of thinking that everyone who doesn't believe it is an idiot and has been tricked by this massive thing. Like the flat earthers, you know, believe that there's some weird globe scam that has tricked 99.99% of the planet into thinking that it is roundish. So let's take a look to some stuff here. Thank you to everybody joining me for this one. Lots of fun ones. And yes, I do remember the square root uh, 64 person who's been commenting and asking. I do remember you from chats. And of course, remember George Carosi, one of our awesome combo lords. And many names that I remember from all of our classic streams and such. Now, as far as main content, I am going to right after this stream post... A short, but it's one of the shorts that was temporarily on my other channel, so some people of you may have seen it before, but after a few shorts that were temporarily there that I'll post over the next few days, finally, I finally got them all ready and stuff, uh, I'll post some of the newer ones that I've begun filming as well. And for main episodes, the next one about times tables turned out to be another more than 20 minute episode, but another awesome one. It's all about how times tables are taught wrong. And even though I've ranted about that before, uh, the sector of it called primes and composites, and to a degree the sector of it called squares and almost squares are things that a really avid combo class viewer may already have heard from me. Not all of the details, but some of that. But I haven't shown anything from the sector called the beauty of zooming out. That section of the episode is a, a pattern I haven't shown yet. And it's pretty wild. Now, back to the conspiracies. Some of the ones that I've read about, I read shorter versions of some of that sort of 1900s-ish era from this book by Martin Gardner, who is a great logician and recreational mathematician and also was into uh, studying things like this, fads and fallacies, as this one's called. And I want to at least read just his title, uh, or the subtitle, or whatever you call that portion on there, which is The Curious Theories of Modern Pseudoscientists and the Strange, Amusing, and Alarming Cults that Surround Them. 
a study in human gullibility. I like that phrasing, and it is true that one of the biggest things we learn about here is the strange ways in which people want to believe things, and other strange human attributes, like some conspiracies end up tying into people wanting to feel above other people, or tie into people being scared of people that are different than them, or a variety of strange human emotions pop out from these things. Now, I need to run inside for a moment just to grab some water, and as soon as I get back, we're going to talk about a much more modern conspiracy. Um, if anyone wants to have something to look at in the meantime, you can read about one of the ones that I mentioned the other day that was one of the funnier ones in the Martin Gardner book. We did look at this article once before, but... Fletcherism from Horace Fletcher. This guy had this whole, um, th this guy designed a system known as Fletcherization. So this is an example of one of those uh, milder than grape theory, uh, I mean grape cure, but uh, still a little bit uh, bad for the, not like bad for the health even necessarily this one, but like bad for the mind to let this be something you care about throughout your day. So uh, you can read about his mastication system or you can just stare in the background. That's right here. Um, and I'll be back in a moment to talk about a more modern conspiracy that has been popping up just this week, which sounds ridiculous that people are still going for stuff like this, but. You know, the gullibility has not had enough centuries to breed out of our cavemen DNA yet. So I'll be back shortly.
right, folks, I'm back. Trying to try not to step on the giant shattered clock that uh, you'll see shattering in a few days. <coughs> Welcome back to our chatters and everybody. Thank you all for joining me and hanging around. Now that I'm back and we have already talked about some of the older conspiracies, for example, flat earth and grave cures and stuff, I want to talk about what made me think about conspiracies. It's a topic that's fun to joke about here and there on the channel because I genuinely think that not only does it give me a lot of laughter, but it makes me learn a lot about science because it makes me think about the things that are clearly wrong. We usually think about the things that are probably right in science, but maybe it's good to sometimes think about the things that are clearly wrong that for some reason somebody had a justification for. Then we can make sure we avoid similar justifications for mildly wrong things ourselves. Now, there's been a new little conspiracy that not a huge percentage of people believed Conspiracies like this are always a small thread. Sometimes uh, you'll hear about, you know, the loud ma majority is sometimes, act or the loud minority uh, uh, is, for example, on Twitter or X or whatever, you get people, it seems like everyone's mad about everything, but really the people who are mad leave extra <laughs> flagrant, like eye-catching, frequent comments. <laughs> so... It, it's not, you know, a just or a, it doesn't represent the general populace. However, if there's a loud minority believing something crazy, it can spread in weird ways. Like if we didn't mock the flat earthers enough over history, they could have spread further, you know. Some people with flat earth believe it in a joking way, but there's a lot of modern conspiracies that people believe that they don't believe in a joking way. And some of them, in this case, it's most of the people believed that something might be happening. Not that something was definitely happening, but even raising questions about certain things is such a weird distraction and waste of time and confuses true things. Now, this is where it could get what some people will call political, but I don't think it's actually going to get what I would call political because some of this conspiracy is going to relate to some people think it's tied into vaccinations for COVID. So if we got political, that would be actually talking about, oh, should there be any mandates for that? What should be rules for businesses to stay open or not? Things like that. It's not political to say that the vaccine is safe, that it does not have nanobots in it, and that a little reaction people get to it is normal and expected and better than the other alternative of catching the thing. So it, that's science, that's in my opinion not politics to say that the COVID vaccines have been proven safe enough, there's not any good evidence to the contrary, and that they have been they don't have, for sure, don't have nanobots or some secret little uh, robots in them that the government would be able to activate. That, for sure, is not true. I can't say for 100% that they're safe. Who knows? But there's, no, there's much further evidence that they are than to the contrary. So, without getting political, we do need to understand that backdrop that people who think that there are some people out there who think that the COVID vaccines had weird little nanobots in them or some sort of miniature robot that the government developed in secrecy. It's funny with the conspiracy theorists, whenever there's a weird ship in the sky, it's like, no, the government couldn't have developed that. It has to be an alien. But whenever there's like other things, it's like, oh, the government can control these little flying nanobots that can read the future. and. <laughs> so it, that's a funny thing to watch out for with conspiracy theories and things like that is they'll say that their opposing side, the enemies, are simultaneously, they'll go back and forth between too weak and dumb and too secretly strong and powerful whenever it suits the opinion one way or another. I've even seen that related to definitions of like fascism, where a fascist government compared to another government will would say at times when it helps them, they are so weak and they can't do anything. And at other times we'll say, 
they're going to kill us all if we don't stand up to them. So a lot of people say that about the government where they're like, the government at the same time can't do anything, but also they're uh, tomorrow going to like flood in a million government agents to uh, take all my guns and uh, inject me with magnets and whatever. So, uh, you know, regardless of what you feel about the government, you can't have it both ways and think that they're out to get you to some insane, crazy degree and that they are the weak, powerless ones. Now, what is the conspiracy that people have been believing? It's so ridiculously silly that bef until I looked into it and found actual examples I'll show you, uh, I didn't think, I thought it might be overblown that someone, people were like trolling or something. Sometimes you'll hear about a conspiracy in the news that you get the vibe that you're like, people didn't really believe that. Someone made a joke. Maybe some people half believed it, but it was pretty much a joke. Regardless of if this one started as a joke, I'm going to show posts of people. Uh, what I was able to find is Reddit posts from people, because that's where I knew how to look through to find, like, random actual humans' opinions about this. I probably, if I knew how to cruise Facebook or Twitter, or now X or whatever... Uh, which I, you know, I don't even remember my Facebook logins and stuff, and I don't even have a Twitter account. So, um, if I went through those, that's where some of the worst misconceptions were spreading. But I found on the conspiracy subreddit a bunch of people who genuinely believed this. So you can read through the lines that most of these people were certainly not trolling, unless it was a very subtle troll that some of them were doing. And what, they, what happened is if you're in America or the U.S. and possibly if you're in other parts of the world, you may have gotten your phone to beep for half an hour. No, it didn't beep for half an hour. It was within a half hour window. Your phone beeped for a minute or something. And if you turned it off, it stopped beeping right away. So, like, I heard it go off. I knew it was coming because they made a warning that they're like, we're going to bother you on this day. We're going to make everyone's phone beep. What is it? It's testing for if they need to do that in a disaster. There could be a disaster where they need you to know right away, as quick as possible, there's a tsunami. Or if you're a conspiracy theorist, you should be even glad about this. What if they need to warn you about the aliens you believe about or whatever? Oh, there's probably different conspiracy theorists. They don't always overlap, you know. But... There was a warning that wasn't that weird to me and most people because you've gotten smaller scale versions of this many times. I've gotten ones from my state many times or from my city maybe that tell you a random thing. We need to tell you that this area is going to be raining really heavy and so you're not supposed to drive there today or stuff like that. I've gotten alerts from my city and my state and such and this was the first one in a while, not the first one ever. The first one in a while that was the whole U.S. and also lined up with other parts of the world. And so this thing beeped as a test that I think worked. I think everyone was able to get it properly. That was just saying, like, we're making sure that if we needed to, you know, say some crazy message like there's a world war going down or whatever that we could let you know. They used to do that on the radio. They would still do it on the TV. But nowadays, people aren't tuned into the same channel as much. And so not everybody is going to be, you know, hitting the same radio stations or listening to the radio or listening to the TV. You know, one person's on YouTube. This person's on TikTok. This person's on that. So they'll warn you on your phone. Makes sense. I don't have anything wrong with it. It's a little annoying that they need to test it. I'm like, let's just assume it works. You don't need to test it. But how annoying is it? I, I've gotten a lot of spam calls that are certainly more annoying than a once in a few years beep from the government to test something. So some people began thinking, without looking up the fact that this is actually relatively frequent and normal, they didn't remember this ever happening before in their recent memory or their lifetime of having a phone. So they thought, this is really weird. Why are they all of a sudden testing something? Like, 
It's what are they planning? What's the government trying to do? A lot of people, and the, the, here's where the conspiracies split, because now people believe all sorts of different things coming from this point. The, uh, the only thing in common that these all have is that the government's doing something weird with this phone beeping. Now, some people believed that it was going to be when the government started a world war or something, that they were going to send you a message that was like, we're coming to get all your guns and then Russia is going to own you or something. That like they thought it was going to be, everything's going down right then. A lot of them misinterpreted because they didn't read all of the words carefully what the government said, which was that in a half hour window, we're gonna make your phone beep sometime. They misread that and thought that it said, it's gonna ring for half an hour. And so a lot of people were going off about, why would they need to ring it for half an hour? That's so suspicious. When they never said that. They said there's gonna be a half hour window it might ring during. Mine, I clicked the button on the side or something on it, as soon as it went off, I don't even remember because it's a pretty normal thing that's happened before. I, like, have you ever gotten the Amber Alerts that tell you someone's gotten abducted nearby? It's something that you don't even choose. It just happens on your phone. They tell you if you see a blue sedan, let the police know because someone got abducted or something. The Amber Alerts happen every once in a while and it was like that. I saw a button, I clicked it off. So. I don't even remember, you know, how long it lasted, but it pretty much instantly shut off as soon. Like, if I hadn't clicked a button, I don't know how long it would have gone, but probably like a minute or something. Some people thought that if it wasn't signaling that that's when like the world war was starting or that's when the government was going to say, all of a sudden we are uh, forcing everyone to get COVID shots and everyone must wear a collar and whatever. Other people thought that this was going to activate something inside our blood and that the government had been sneaking nanobots inside us. Nanobots being minuscule robots. Now, this sounds so absurd that at this point you're like, how could anybody believe that? But genuinely, Probably a larger amount of people nowadays believe this than believe something like Flat Earth or the Grape Cure. Now, the weird thing about it is if you look into, these people are saying that the government is going to, some of them said that the nanobots were in the COVID vaccines. And so if you have a COVID vaccine, for some reason, people who think the COVID vaccines are gonna kill people, like want to rub it in and want it to happen. It's sort of evil. They're like, ha ha, I can't wait until you get proven or until I get proven right by you dying. Ha ha ha. It's like, yo, chill out. Like you, even if you think you're right, you really want the bad scenario to happen so that you can be proven right. Even if you think it means that like everyone with a vaccine is going to drop dead on a certain date. There are a lot of people online who said like, if you get the vaccine, you will die a month after. A month passes and they say, uh, actually it starts kicking in in a month is what I meant. And then you die in three months. And they're like, well, actually, I mean, uh, three months is when secretly it goes in your brain in a weird way and you die after one year when your fast is a new excuse, you know? And so this time, some people thought that this government beeping was going to make the phones trigger something in the blood of the people who got the COVID vaccine, which doesn't make any sense for a conspiracy. Like if you were writing a book about this, you'd say, I need to rewrite the plot because that doesn't make sense as a goal of a conspiracist. It's if the government wanted to poison everybody, the conspiracy people were saying that the people who got the vaccine are being brainwashed for the government to want only them and that the government was trying to kill off anyone who didn't have the vaccine. All of a sudden, the government's sending this beep to kill everyone who had the vaccine. These same people over the years have said that the government only liked the people who got the vaccine. So it doesn't make any sense. 
But then if they're questioned about this, they'll say, well, yeah, it's so mysterious that it doesn't make any sense. That means we've got to look into it because it's so weird that it doesn't make sense. It's like, yeah, or just it doesn't make sense, period. For everything that does that makes sense, there's an infinite amount of shadows to it that don't make sense. And so maybe it's one of those. Now, let's look at some actual posts that are from people that have posted about this. And maybe one or two will gauge could be a troll, but when I skim through these, they all seemed subtle enough and genuine enough that it seems like people who are actually scared of this. Now, the problem with these conspiracy theories is that it gets in the way of real science, the same way that a grape cure would get in the way of anyone knowing about proteins and carbs and smart knowledge about diets. Flat Earth would get in the way of you researching things about the globe and gravity and stuff because you're like, why would I research that? It's flat. And this will, a slightly different, but it'll breed weird conspiracy blocks in front of people ever like learning about the truth about all the vaccines they took as a child and how those are similar to this new vaccine about you know, any time you might need to or want to trust your government about, you know, a general like neighborly vibe of like, just why do you think everyone's trying to secretly kill you? And so like, it's sort of when you have a conspiracy theory often tied to it, like I said, is this thought that everyone who doesn't believe it's an idiot who's being tricked. So if somebody has a conspiracy theory, I feel like we have free reign to roast them as much as possible. You know how I believe in moral roasting here. Like you get to roast some friends a little extra because you have a playful relationship. You can roast celebrities a little extra because they're already rich. You don't want to punch down too much. You don't want to roast people if it'll hurt their feelings. But these people, I feel like you have free reign to roast them because attached to their conspiracies is them roasting you is them saying that, well, yeah, I believe the thing that makes you a moron for not believing. So it's like they're inherently calling all of us morons if we have taken the vaccine or if we don't care if the phone beeps or things like that. So let's roast them back. Now, let's look at some of these actual posts on the... Uh, so no need to frequent this on your own, folks. I'm sure you'll get hit with some bad knowledge. I'm sure some of the conspiracies here are genuine, like, I don't know, maybe Epstein didn't kill himself. There's some possibly real conspiracies. But if we look in here under alert and search under the past week, we're going to see the ones that are people talking about this specific thing. So... First here is just somebody before it happened that just saying this is really weird. The emergency alert test dates coincide in both the US and Russia. Why would it coincide? You gotta go on offline mode. Okay, now that one's a milder one because if we go to these ones, um, Some of these are when it was about to happen. So presidential, I don't know, cell alert. We're going to look at a few of these. So let's look at some of these posts people have made. There's so many of them. Oh, my God. So uh, I don't even know if we'll get through all of them. This emergency alert thing is simply too big for its britches. It's a solution for a problem we don't have. Um, why don't see the need? What kind of emergency could be happening? There isn't one. Da, 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 da. So what the, okay, so this person's theory, this, like I said, it splits here. Everyone um, in common here thinks that the emergency alert was the government doing some magnificent scheme on you, but they, then it splits. This person's opinion is that it's not going to like trigger a nanobot, but that they are testing our ability to speak en masse to us as one nation, all perfectly equal, like in communism. 
about what they will let you know. Da, da, da. So th some people were saying this, the government is trying to turn us into sheep. They're trying to tell you that you are in my control and I'm allowed to buzz your phone whenever I want. It's like, yeah, we live in a government. They have some control over us. There's things called laws. So a phone buzzing is a very, very small example of the government taking control. And I don't think if they were trying to like turn us all into sheep and keep us in line, it would be by having your phone ring to say, this was a test, and then you can turn it off as quick as you want. So what? You know? So this person thinks is going to, this, this is too short to tell if it could have been a troll or not, but says gonna activate the mRNA and put you in zombie mode. You can see that the people, the responses weirdly on all these posts uh, usually disagree. A lot of them got downvoted, meaning if they say zero, that means they had like at least as many downs as ups and, or more, I guess. And so like, for some reason, there's a lot of people who posted on this subreddit about conspiracies they believed, but it didn't get good reception. The actual commenters were like more on the lines of like, this isn't a real conspiracy. Um, but how about here? Look at how much time this person dedicated to this. Testing four phones so that they can check what it does. Expected results. Da -da -da -da. Still received alerts at the same time. Da -da -da -da. Why did this one receive alerts and the iPhone not? Da -da -da -da. I get it. So a lot of people thought it was crazy that their phones that didn't have service, which were on, got it. It works that way. If you have a phone, you don't need service to be able to call 911. It's connected to things. And so if you have a phone, they can beep it, whether or not you have the number hooked up to that phone, if your phone's on. And so that's just how it works. Like you're able to call 911 for the same reason on a phone that doesn't have service. 911 being, for people outside America, the emergency number. Now, this person thinks phone started buzzing, harvested, da, 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 da. no, that, I don't know. Can we theorize as to why it didn't happen? Big deal, I thought you didn't want it to happen. Okay, Nate, we gotta let everyone know. Where's some of the ones I actually saw here that are a little longer? Um, oh my God, there's too many to find the ones that I saw before, but we're just gonna flip through some of these. So, yeah, here's where it starts to get crazy. The ones that are right before the alert. Look at the, these. Um, should I call off work today? Well, this is getting your mind, this is ruining your life. If your phone buzzing once is enough to make you think you have to quit work for the whole day. I'm very nervous about this October 4th alert shit and I have no idea what information is correct or wrong. That's because like they were on Facebook or Twitter and they read people saying, I was told that it's gonna do something really weird. And so they're like so weighing that information as equally with the other information they've heard that says, nope, it's a phone buzzing. Uh, they're equally weighing that with like some Facebook or Twitter post they must have seen. I'm wondering if I should call off work <laughs> because they weren't going to wear it. See, they're going to like turn their phone off or like bury it or something. There are some people who said they're going to put it in a like Faraday cage type bag, like certain things that are supposed to block phone signals. And then like, or they're like, okay, I'm going to make sure that I'm the dad of the family. I'm going to collect all my kids' phones and my wife's phone and we're going to lock them in the car. There was one who says, I don't know if we'll find this, but who a few people, it seemed genuine because there was a few different people who said this, that a landlord turned off power to a building for an hour or at least said he was going to, sent out a letter that he was going to, I forget if there was results or not, because he didn't want any phones going off in the building during the hour. It's... You could kill somebody by just turning off the power to somebody's house. Like, what if they're on an oxygen generator or something? 
you can't just turn off someone's power. And then so people were writing them back like, yo, I work from home. You cannot just turn off my power for an hour because the phone's going to buzz. Um, so this person's correct. This is what I mean by a lot of people are posting here, but the comments are smarter or at least somewhat smarter, you know. This, the person's life is beyond dominated by his portable anxiety device. Oh, well, now they're going a little conspiracy theory. It's, yes, phones are bad for mental health, but they're, it's not like the end of the world to use a phone. But, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's what all the comments are like. They're like, no, chill out about the alert. That's not the real conspiracy. The real conspiracy is that, <laughs> and then, like, some crazy hint of something. So... This person says, is something major coming tomorrow? Really feels as if, okay, I'm scared to click this. We'll try and pause it right away and not get any audio. Warning, something is something major happening on October 4th? Something major happening? <laughs> is something major? Really feels like they're setting something up tomorrow. Oh, this is the one I mentioned where they, they just like didn't reread the sentence to see that the sentence never said this. It's strange how the emergency alert is lasting for 30 minutes because it's a 30 minute window it can occur during. Um, slipped down my rabbit hole. Da -da -da -da. But hey, if we're going to talk about conspiracies, how weird is it? We had our Speaker of the House voted out yesterday, first time in history, and today Russia and the U.S. are testing our respective emergency alert systems. Who's president if, God forbid, we lose it? Mm, kept me up all late last night, but I'm sure tomorrow will come and all will be well. Doesn't sound like you think that. It kept you up all night. So, does anyone feel a bit off today? This person is taking it far enough that it's not them before the alert saying, oh no, I'm gonna, something crazy is gonna happen. It's them after the alert saying, like getting a placebo effect of thinking they're sick or that they got sick and it's a coincidence, but. My wife and child are not sick, and they also indulge in holistic medicine over pharmaceuticals. That's not good. They're saying this as a brag, but they're like, don't worry, folks. We don't use pharmaceuticals. We only use holistic medicine. Uh, there is holistic medicine out there that does good things, but in general, if you had to pick one of these two, uh, just as, without any extra knowledge, this will usually be the better one for your health. Not to take a bunch of pills or anything. The pharmaceutical industry is a bit absurd and is a crazy profit machine. And, you know, be careful about all the pills your doctors will recommend you. But if you're sick, you know, take an antibiotic if you need or whatever. Now, this person's like, yeah, I never trusted these people. And da -da -da -da. Is anyone strangely under the weather today? Must have something to do with the wildfire, too. So, um, oh, and that was funny. They're just, I was infected by COVID in quotes once. It's like, they don't even think COVID exists, even though they know they got sick by the thing that they're putting in. It's like, why is it in quote? It's like, if it's a disease that got you sick, is it not w what they named? <laughs> like, um, so, some there's other ones I was seeing here that maybe alert doesn't. Oh yeah, Faraday bag. So look, we all know what is. What do you mean we all know? We all know what's supposed to happen with the phone alerts. I don't think they mean we all know your phone will buzz for a minute. I think they mean that we all know this is going to have some crazy effect on anybody who has gotten vaccinated and or anybody in general. I was just thinking, what happens if you have your personal phone in a Faraday bag? <laughs> just taking this so far. Like, what happens if we bury the phone, but no, that's not enough. What if we put the phone on a kite and then fly the kite like 300 feet up? Is that gonna work? What if, maybe we'll put the, the phone on a little spaceship. Speaking of which, some people have tried to prove flat Earth. Flat Earth, since, like I said, it's one of the less hateful conspiracies, they're less often, like, it's not less tied to, like, 
racial undertones or a lot of other conspiracies get weird things in them. But Flat Earth is a little like gentler, or just sillier, I think. But people are more harmful to themselves than to others if they believe Flat Earth. A Flat Earther might talk your ear off, but they're not going to physically hurt you probably. But they're going to hurt themselves maybe because there have been multiple tests of people who have tried to fly up in a homemade rocket to try and see if the Earth's round or not. I saw a video the other day of one guy who didn't die doing it. There was someone who I do think died doing that once. But one guy who didn't even die I saw the other day was just like this guy who shoots up, comes down like half crash lands and really hurts his back. And he's just like, oh, it was worth it. It's like, really? What did you see up there? Like you saw that you weren't high enough to see enough of a curve and that that means there's probably not one. Do you really think it was worth it while you're clutching your back? No. Um, this person put their phone in a Faraday bag cage. They're turning into a scientist for all the wrong reasons. I guess uh, we're teaching random conspiracy theorists about Faraday cages, uh, which we'll look at sometime, named after Daniel Faraday. Cool type of science. For instance, if you work in an office or around a bunch of people, would you still get the same effects from the radiation slash frequency? How far away from the phone would you have to be in order to be safe? It's funny, like, they think that when they read an article somewhere uh, on, like, face, probably not even an article, probably, like, a post from some random person on, like, Facebook or Twitter or something that told them there's going to be some crazy radiation frequency coming out enough that they think we all know it. Also remember that your home pages of apps like that are tailored to what you like to look at. They show you more of whatever you click on. And so the people who follow conspiracy theories see more information like that and then say, everyone thinks this. And it's just silly. It's like, it's similar to a lot of people think like, no, actually, like, everybody likes so-and-so politician. When it's like, no, you click on the posts about that person, so your home page is more posts from the fans of that person. You know? <laughs> but here, this person thinks, uh, since their home page was full of this, that we all know there's going to be some sort of radiation frequency. And they seem to think that they weren't given enough info, but that somebody has the info, that somebody in these comments might be able to tell them, oh, it's the type of radiation that if, if you're six feet away is the limit to be safe. So, <laughs> what are you looking for here? Um, probably just confirmation. They want somebody to say, they probably would, if somebody says it, it's not a thing, they're going to feel mad and argue because their foot's stuck in. They already said that they believe it. And conspiracy theorists like to dig themselves in deeper because they have this sunken cost fallacy thing going on where they're like, I can't admit I'm wrong at this point. If I admit I'm wrong at this point, I wasted a lot of time and I'm going to look foolish to other people. So I have to just like keep sticking with this and really hope it's right. And so... A lot of them only like half believe it at a certain point, but they cling to the half that is what they've been saying so that they don't look foolish or feel like they wasted a lot of time. Um, look up sunken cost fallacy among other emotional human things that are at play there. And here um yeah there's more of these if we go through the point is that is such a ridiculous silly conspiracy that has happened just like four days ago or something of people still think such insane things that are almost on the level of actually i'm not even going to say almost i think that's crazier not the radiation frequency but some of the people who thought that it's going to activate the vaccine of people who got covid through some like secret connection because that had nanobots in it. I think that's crazier than flat earth. Definitely crazier than the grape cure. So people believe at least as crazy stuff as they did in the 1800s. And 
they're feeding into each other's delusions because they're all on each other's front pages saying a game of telephone of like first person's like I wonder if the phone will do something weird and second person's like I heard that maybe the phone's going to do a weird radiation thing and then the third person's like I, someone said that the phone is going to radiate your insides and then the fourth person's like oh so I heard a fact that it's been proven that your uh, vaccine will get activated by and they like add little bits and then blur out the bits that need more details and then play this game of telephone and then it's all on their homepage and they think that oh 50 percent of people believe that <laughs> so careful with what you believe if what you believe is something that seems to be such a minority opinion that's totally okay with culture. Like, you can like a form of art that almost nobody else likes. Nothing wrong with that. But as far as beliefs about science, uh, if, if what, and same with math, if you're writing a math proof, this is similar things. Uh, if what you say doesn't line up with what almost everyone else says, that doesn't mean you're automatically wrong. But don't be so cocky about your thing and just, like, accept criticism and accept that if 99.9% .9 of people believe something radically different than what you believe in a scientific way, that it's more likely you're wrong and that you have a lot of proving to do before you should build the cockiness that some of these people have about the opinions. So... Conspiracy theories, they're quite funny. I'm going to reread some chapters of Fads and Fallacies again later and see if I have any favorites, which I can let you folks know in another stream. Our next, I'm going to wrap up relatively soon, but I am going to look at the comments again in a moment. So to anyone who wanted me to see a comment, I will in a sec, or any last questions you have. Uh, I will do another stream not too long from now, probably tomorrow or something, where I want to, it's going to be more magic card game theory, also board game game theory, because I still have some proofs to puzzle through about this mathematical challenge about magic cards I've been fiddling around with when I, like, am bored and, you know, you know, I'm falling asleep or whatever. I'll be like, what if your opening hand was this? Does the math work? Well, I'm trying to prove a certain type of 23-card deck that would always win on the first turn to expand on my 22-card deck I found. And I figured the proofs of it could be fun to share with you guys to show you how I go through proving if one of these works or doesn't. So we may do that in our next stream. Also, stay tuned to the Combo Class channel where... The last episode from about a week ago you hopefully saw. That's the one linked in the description. And the next one will be coming out in probably a day or two. I'm not sure how much more editing I still need, but it's going to be another more than 20-minute episode. It is how times tables are taught wrong, and it's, it's going to be a really good episode. So stay tuned for that one. And as usual, I have many other fun things planned. I've been working on a lot of writing and music and other projects that you folks will be able to hear before too long. Now let me look at our comments and say goodbye to you folks. Um, here we have a lot of random comments and stuff. And thank you all for joining me. Oh, somebody was mentioning that climate change is a good example of a topic whose discussion gets hijacked by conspiracy theorists on either side. And I do want to mention climate change because climate change is scientifically proven enough that the Earth's temperature is rising and that it's somewhat caused by humans that I would consider it a conspiracy to say that's not the case. And I don't think that it's a fair debate to say um, that some people can take it too far maybe and say like, must abolish every single corporation. You cannot ever use coal or whatever. You can take it too far, like anything. But we must be far closer to the side of making laws that corporations can pollute less and putting maybe more tax money toward actually fixing things like that to what degree we can or stalling it's getting worse. Because July 
was the, I actually have this pulled up. I'm glad that you reminded me. I have one or two more things to show. July was the hottest July in the record. This doesn't mean that before this, it was, there was a hotter July. This means is how long they've been measuring it. It may be the hottest July Earth's had in a million years. We've just been measuring it for 174. The hottest July on certain scientific averages. So to everyone who was saying, oh, climate change is just summer, get over it, it's just summer or whatever. No, we are making it really bad. This is because of humans, it is demonstrable. There are other factors, but humans are making the biggest role of the problem. And it's the hottest July in 174 years, that's awful. I do think that there's a way we can try and reverse it if we really slowly change our societal way we approach companies and corporations and pollution and stuff. And, you know, we'll have to team up with other nations. It's not just going to be just any one country. Um, this is something serious to work on. So I would say that it is a conspiracy when people say that climate change is not caused by humans or that it is not happening. Now, of course, like I said, people can take it too far, but there's no, I, it's hardly anyone is taking it too far on that side, on the side of being too hard on the corporations. It's like the corporations, we could be harder on them. They're getting away with getting super, super duper rich while causing a lot of pollution. Uh, there's also factory farming causes a lot of issues with cow gas and various things. So well, maybe we'll go into this at some point. I don't know all the details off the top of my head. I would have to re-research a few things. But the general point is that one modern conspiracy theory is that climate change is a myth or that humans are not involved in it. the earth getting hotter. It, the reason I was going to mention this one is because it was so hot here the past few days. It felt so much hotter than I ever remember it being here. Like, at night, I had to sleep with my window open at, like, 11 p.m. because it was boiling hot still. And then at, like, 3 a.m., I had to wake up and close the window because it got cold all of a sudden. But it was, like, boiling hot at midnight. So which doesn't happen where I live. I don't live in a hot area. So problems. Now, the other things I wanted to show, maybe I'll actually save for the next stream because they're sort of their own topic to discuss. They were a few real bits of space news. It's nothing hugely groundbreaking, like we found an alien moss or whatever, but there are a few cool bits of space news. All, probably share those next stream. If you're really curious on your own, you look up uh, something related to carbon being found and something related to twin planets that were in an unexpected place. So we'll look at those in the next stream or something like that, uh, or feel free to look those things up on your own. Stay tuned for our next combo class episode coming out before long. And I hope you're having a nice clocktober. Going to do some fun things as we ramp up toward Halloween. There'll be more pumpkins appearing throughout this month. And after our stream, we will eat some fruit. Let's take a bite of the miniature one to wrap up. Look at this tiny apple. I swear, it's fully ripe. Seems like it's not, but the, this one tree just makes pretty small ones sometimes. Mmm. That's really good. Small but sweet. Okay. I love you folks. And I will catch you all in the next one. Thank you all for joining me. And we can discuss any of these topics later. We didn't, you know, if you don't believe me on the climate change thing or whatever, it's okay to disagree sometimes. Ask me your questions about it in the next stream. Love you all so much, and I will catch you in the main combo class episode coming out in a day or two, and or when I do my next stream, which will be in a day or two also. Don't know which will come first. All right.